What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. And my husband is here. I'm not. Hello, husband. No, no, How not here. You? I'm not here. So you remember, like two weeks ago, we watched that video with the mortician. Ah, uh, I yes, yeah. And it was very enjoyable. It was a fun mm -hmm. video. Yeah, he pulled out the the largest instrument <laughs> I'd ever seen. <laughs> From like his pant leg, like he fucking just reached in, <laughs> just was like, just kept fucking. It was comically long. It was, it was really big. And was like, then I just fuck shove it, just fuck, fuck. And but he had like such a nice fucking face. He was so pleasant. Like a, yeah. like a smile with it. Yeah. He had a real psychopath <laughs> kind of area. It's like whenever they play those like cheerful sounding like oldies songs. Yeah. In the, horror yeah. movies, you like somebody's literally getting like hacked the to pieces. The best one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Came from a movie that's not good. Okay. The Hill Has Eyes. Never seen it. Yeah. Has the best fucking song that plays. It's just so fucking like chill hick, you know? Yeah. And like somebody would use it for a dubstep remix. <laughs> but like after people have died to that song, it is just not the same. Uh, so what are we watching today? People just like getting cremated, like live no, cremations? No, 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 no. Nothing that <laughs> gruesome. Uh, so this one is surgeon, okay? Okay. A surgeon okay. answers surgery questions. That's okay. Am I going to so. wake up? I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. No. We're doing great. Uh, if Come I on. sound a little nasally, no, it's not COVID. Mm -hmm. It's just allergies. I'm just dying of allergies. Man, I can't wait till COVID ends so you can stop making those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Is it even healthy to consume charcoal? Uh, no, it is not healthy to consume what? charcoal. I know that I there's say, all kinds of fad cleanses and this and that. I would not recommend any of them. You don't need that toothpaste, trust me. I'm Annie Onishi and I'm uh. a trauma surgeon and this is Surgery Support. Okay. All I know about trauma surgeons is from Great Our Anatomy, first tweet no comes from it. Wes Mulbash. Wes asks, I'm a novice camper and I'm putting together my first aid kit. What do I need for a makeshift tourniquet? Well, Wes, why get a makeshift one when you can have a real one? This is a combat application tourniquet. It is readily nice. available on the internet. It runs about 30 bucks, and it is much better than anything you could fashion from a rope or a belt or a shirt. So basically what you would do is say you had a, a wound here on the arm that was bleeding uncontrollably and you couldn't control that bleeding by simple pressure. You would pull out your trusty tourniquet, slide it on above the arm, tighten it just above where the injury is, tighten the belt and Velcro it just in place like so. That's Next, you're gonna cool. turn this windlass. Uh, this yeah. really hurts in real life, so I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, but this windlass painful. basically tightens this tourniquet to a pressure that is above arterial pressure. Oh. Once you tighten it, it locks into place underneath this little clip. You have this Velcro strap to keep your windlass in place, and you would leave that on until you could seek definitive care. Why Wait, use a fake never... one when you can use mm -hmm. the real thing? At... I never knew that a tourniquet hurt. Yeah, so imagine, right, when we're talking about choking people out, yeah. right? We talk about you grip, yeah. you know, and then you grip, uh -huh. and then you squeeze. Uh -huh. And then I tell you sometimes, when the guy turns his face into the elbow, uh -huh. the guy just crushes his nose. Yeah, just And squishes. it turns into a face crush. Yeah. So professional fighters tap out occasionally yeah. just from having a human squeeze on their fucking face yeah. for like five seconds and it hurts real, real yeah. bad. That thing can create way more pressure than a human can and it doesn't come off. And I just never considered it. Watch Marine videos where they're doing like their, what happens if your buddy goes down in combat and they do the leg tourniquet and they, they put the actual, they do oh, the whole thing. No. Watch the video where they do that and the guy's screaming on the ground that's supposed to be the body. Oh my Cause God. Cause it's very, very painful. The one on the leg, the ah. inside of the fucking groin, they crank that shit up and oh, then drag yeah. them across oh, the thing. Oh my god! Oh man, it's so fucking Hell funny. Hell no! It's Just so funny. Just let me die. Absolutely not. <laughs> let Hell me no. bleed out. At Liz Gillies writes, "Wow, how long does it take to feel normal slash not like a corpse after an appendectomy? I am really over it. Really over it." Well, Liz, in cases like this, what I usually recommend is a little can of suck it up. 
Appendectomy is really a minor operation. You should really be feeling pretty much good as new within 24, 48 hours. Take some Tylenol and call me in the morning. Here's a question from Damn Red it. Fulfill. At Creeps Creation it. asks, how come at the ER they cut off your clothes instead of just taking them off? Like, what is that? That was my favorite shirt. First yeah. of all, you're sure. welcome for saving your life. Second of all, <laughs> we use these little kitty safety scissors. These are called trauma shears. They have a nice flat little lip here so we so won't we, cut ya. Yeah, so you. Know In general, you. if somebody's not super sick or dying right away, we try to make an effort to not cut stuff like jeans, nice pants, belts, but t-shirts are fair game, underpants are fair game, especially if they look okay. old and dirty. Sometimes yeah. we just have to get your clothes off in a great big hurry so we can see what's hurt and get you fixed. Next question. Okay, but look, I paid a oh. lot of money for these Savage X Fenty mm -hmm. panties. So mm -hmm. if you could just shimmy them off, uh -huh. that would be appreciated, okay? Uh -huh. These shits was, what is it? It was two for 29 for the, 29 the thing, because I got the special, the but then the panties were not on special. Uh -huh. So my uh -huh. panties were like $24.50. They're like $30 panties. If you ever been around you with a cold, like a flu, the flu, you've been running with the flu. Yeah, I sleep. You ever been I... around you with a headache? Okay, I sleep a you lot. You turn into a limp noodle. There's no shimmying. <laughs> they won't be able to gently shimmy anything. You... <laughs> I'm cut. Cut that shit off. <laughs> comes from at P burn. Don't eat or drink before eight hours before surgery. Oh, and also take these four pills an hour before you get here. How? All right, Patrick, just chill out. We just don't want you to have a big cheeseburger on board when you're going to sleep and getting that breathing tube put in. If you barf that cheeseburger up while we're putting the breathing tube in oh, and you get yeah. cheeseburger in your lungs, you're in for a long stay in the ICU with an aspiration pneumonia. That's why you can't eat. Couple of sips of water with your pills, not a big deal. Next question yeah. comes from at sex no warlocks. Any now. doctors on here that know why my piss stink like beef? <laughs> hey man, I ain't got insurance. I saw a surgeon answering questions. I need some fucking help. Maybe I should stop eating beef, but until I change my diet, I'm not changing shit. I tell the I internet. I just feel like you don't. Y'all don't. Y'all don't have to out yourselves like this. Yeah, sex warlocks. Check yourself. It's a good name. Uh, no, no, there are no doctors on here who know why your piss stink like beef. <laughs> why are you smelling your piss? <laughs> Next question is from like at beef, Harris Twist. Okay, but in Grey's Anatomy, why do all the surgeons in the hospital go and wait outside when an ambulance is coming? Like, does the hospital only hire eight surgeons and they do everything? Uh, there's a lot more than eight surgeons in any given hospital. For trauma and emergencies, there's usually only one on call. No, we do not go outside and wait for the ambulance. We got better stuff to be doing than that. But every now and then, if the chopper's coming in, I love watching that thing land. We get patients via chopper with some degree of frequency, probably once a day. So I'll run oh out God. and see that once in a blue. Next question comes from at Jimmy Gems 22. Ouch, ouch, just cut my finger. How do I know if I need a stitch or not? Sounds like if you're tweeting, you're probably fine. Um, or maybe the cut's just not on your thumbs. My friends from all walks of life call me all the time with all sorts of horrific photos of injuries on themselves, their pets, their kids. Uh, essentially, you need a stitch if you can see subcutaneous fat. So if you yeah. can see little glo globules of yellow things, that's fat. That that probably mm -hmm. could use a stitch or two. If you're in the neighborhood, come knock on my door. I got all the stuff. Come on by. We'll get you fixed up. So when I accidentally sliced my husband open. Yep. <sighs> Wonderful. <laughs> so great. Best top 10 out of 10 would cut again. When I accidentally sliced my husband open, <laughs> you could see. Oh, yeah. All... <laughs> yeah. You know... <laughs> Fucking no. Let me tell And my hand let, works just let me, fine. Let me let me fucking tell you. You fucking know. Yeah. If there's a question about it, you probably don't need stitches. Okay, let me just tell you. If you look at it and your stomach immediately goes. Can't eat that. 
That's not edible. Your, your stomach immediately goes, Bleh. It's raw. <laughs> Where's the lab sauce? <laughs> I don't like blood, right? Like, I, I'm not a fan of yeah, blood. Right. But, like, it doesn't make, it doesn't, like, make me uh, queasy. I do uh, get kind of, I do get grossed out, like, mentally. I'm like, ew, it doesn't make me queasy. When I saw that cut, I thought I was going to fucking pass out. Okay. I did. He did pass out. So, I thought I, I he had to like hold pressure on it, and I had to drive, and we're both shaking like fucking, like we're gonna die. Yeah, like, it was bad. and then we didn't. But I'm just saying, when you look at that shit, you fucking know, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're aware. Your body, your body knows like something's wrong with that shit. That shit this, is fucked up. That's a problem. <laughs> Are you being abused? <laughs> <laughs> you probably start shaking it on you. But you're good Are now. we good? You're yeah, good I'm good. Now. Everything's fine. You need to find some ointment to make the shit not look so shiny. Oint, oint. Oint. BA underscore 27 asks Can someone educate me on why is it that when I get a little cut on my finger, I bleed like crazy, but when doctors do surgery, it seems like people don't bleed as much? Well, Brian, I'm a professional. I know where your arteries and veins live. Therefore, I avoid them when I cut. You don't. <laughs> Next up from at Heath underscore McGregor. Can an electric eel shock a person's heart back into rhythm like a defibrillator? A defibrillator is a machine that delivers a targeted a measured question. amount of yeah. electricity to a heart that is either uh, in something called ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. This is a heart rhythm where the heart is just shaking and not pumping blood. The shock is meant to Sorry, surprise the heart really cells funny. back into mm -hmm. a normal pumping rhythm. An electric eel would not be able to cardiovert a patient back into a normal rhythm because it's not timed along with the patient's own heart rhythm. Oh, Next okay. up is a question from at naps and nugs. Sometimes I think about the fact that I had a surgery a while ago and they took a whole ass organ out of me. Like, how do you sew that shit back? Where is my gallbladder? I <laughs> have is so my many questions. <laughs> well, the gallbladder. Oh my God is a tiny little bag no. that lives underneath the right lobe of the liver. Shut up. You've never seen one of these bodies with the little organs in them. No. So you don't know where your organs are. No. We're going to shoot an organ. We're going to do the little online quiz about where your organs are. So like I thought for the longest time, okay, I didn't understand, but oh. like your my back would hurt when I got like kidney infections because I used to get them a lot because I thought your kidneys were like huh? right here. I can't wait that lives underneath the right lobe of the liver. As you can see here, it's attached via the cystic duct to the common bile duct. That is sort of the plumbing of your liver. That's how the bile gets out of your liver and into your intestines. Once it's out, it goes into a little jar about that big. Sometimes it goes into a big bucket if it's a big gallbladder. We send it off to the pathology lab. They look at it under the microscope and then they discard it. I think it actually gets uh, incinerated. So your gallbladder has probably been long incinerated and uh, is just a memory at this point. That's fucked up. You can feed Our next them. question comes from don't at don't mess with puppy. When given anesthesia before surgery, why does the doctor have their patient count backwards from 10 rather than just counting one, two, three? Hate to break it to you, Poppy, but we don't actually do that. There's no counting involved. You just kind of drift off to sleep. I usually try to make... They did kind of have me count. They do, yeah. Some do, some like do. A little small talk as the patient's going off to sleep. Little kids, I try to tell them to have a nice dream and have a good rest and everything's gonna be fine. Adults, I like to say, well, what are you gonna eat after surgery? Cause that's usually what most people are focused on. So I went under when I got my wisdom teeth removed. This was when we were engaged and I was so excited and they were talking to me about like being engaged and the proposal. The one lady, nurse started talking about how her nieces got engaged. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. If they could have just wheeled a little faster. Just a little <laughs> Get her the fuck out of here, guys. And she was talking about how her nieces got engaged and they got engaged the same way in the same place. And they got engaged at like the wishing well at Disneyland or something. <laughs> And I told them. Get it out. Get it out. Tell I, them. Just get to the part because it's killing me. I, t I told that nurse <laughs> that that was a basic bitch proposal. She said that's a basic bitch proposal while in a wheelchair that that lady is wheeling 
for you. Oh, did I say it again outside? So it happened twice? Yeah, I told her when they were first... Oh my God. When they were first, oh putting, no! When they were first putting me under, oh no! I didn't, I didn't know, know I that. I told her again. Oh no! I didn't know you. You told her twice. I didn't know I told her the second time. You told her twice. Her face looked so defeated too. That lady was just. <laughs> Jackie goes, oh, this girl, this lady's niece has got engaged. It was a basic bitch proposal. <laughs> I'm just looking at the lady like I'm I'm just sorry. Oh, Yo, it's fine, is it? Because you look hurt. My wife <laughs> can never go back. Can never. I'm glad I don't need any more Get teeth out. removed. Get me out of here. Uh, I hope I you guys go. enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your react requests and recommendations oh. down in the comments below. Uh -uh. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's get lit. <laughs>